Hello and welcome. So hopefully this episode is out within three weeks of the last episode. But by the end of this episode, I should be caught up with up to the present with my No Stabil series. So these clips are recorded between around December and February. So since it was December, by using the bonus XP from the Festive Aura, I was able to get 95 summoning. And now with this unlocked, I get the Iron Titan. So yay, Iron Titan. I'm not sure what I could use it for though. I could probably use it for charm collecting since I'm almost at my next goal. But I can't really think of using it at any bosses since I need to stand as well and I don't have Soul Split yet. After doing summoning, I was able to knock off another skill. This time I finished off 99 Fire Making. Now it's a nice easy AFK skill now with bonfires, which I think they did bonfires really well by trying to make it more social. I was able to have a few chats while doing bonfires and enjoyed the few chats that I was able to have. Whether it's fire making or not, that's kind of like a whole different issue. But I'm just glad that it lets me sit in a fixed location so I can like keep the clan avatar out at Edgeville. Then I got some extra levels, 87 crafting, 90 to 96 dungeonary. And since I got 96 dungeonary, I was able to, because like after all those dungeons, I figured I would pick up a chaotic mall because it's pretty much the best weapon in game, not counting drag or weapons. And as you can see, I already pretty close to 99 engineer, so I have a lot of tokens left over. I'm considering actually buying one of the shields, but I'm not entirely sure on that yet because he, they keep changing things around. So I'm just gonna save up the tokens and maybe buy it at a future date. So in the engineering. I ended up choosing to buy Cosmic Runes because it would really help when I'm doing C1s, it would help me start out in dungeons. And I chose Cosmics over Laws because I didn't want to have to keep switching between Laws and Cosmics when I do C1s and when I'm doing Real Floor. And I don't know, even if I get a Hex Hunter, I'm not sure if I would use it because from what I've seen so far in the EOC, a Hex Hunter isn't as... it's still good in some way, but it's not as good as it was before. Before it gave you a really big advantage, but now it's just like, it's just about the same as just using a normal 2H. So, I don't know, I'll just stick with uh, Cosmic Ruins until I do. I probably won't, I'm not expecting to get a Hex Hunter until like maybe 110 Dungeonary. So while I was leveling up Dungeonary, I believe there was a double Dungeonary weekend during December. And this is where this clip is from. Here, we're running through to finish up the floor because double XP weekend is just about to end. So we're racing against the clock to get one last dungeon in before double XP weekend ends. And as the dungeon ends, I go to check the in-game time, which if you didn't know, you can check that current in-game time by going to your developer's console by pressing that weird button on top of your tab button. Then just type anything in and look at the timestamp on the left. And we finished the last dungeon just 12 seconds or double dungeon XP weekend was going to end. So glad to say that I got a bonus 100k XP off that, as well as bonus 10k tokens off of that for completing the dungeon 12 seconds before the bonus would end. Oh, I also got 97 Dungeonary from doing a daily challenge. But after that, I finally hit one of my long-term goals of the series, which was to finally get myself a pack yet. Even though I don't actually think it's much of an upgrade, it does speed up camping bosses like Mephro Dragons where you'll be yakking items back. But if you're not yakking items back, actually, even if you're not, the extra 12 items do help a lot. So it is a nice bonus to have. So yay, got myself a full pack yak. I also got 97 summoning from daily XP from the Clan Cloak. And I believe this is probably going to be the last summoning level I will get for a while. 99 summoning will... It's not really my first priority, I'll most likely get 95 prayer before 99 summoning, but I will still accumulate XP from summoning through weekly XP and even monthly XP. Which reminds me, I think it's been about a good 5 months since I've actually remembered to do Troll Invasion. It really, I mean it's like, it's not a huge priority since I already have a pack yet. The only thing left that I could get is, is like a Steel Titan, which isn't a huge priority to me because there are only so many bosses that you would be able to use your Steel Titan at. So again, I'll probably get 95 prayer before 99 summoning. So looking back, it seems they released a lot of bonus XP over December, but it's nothing new for double loot or double XP weekends to go about. It's common in most games to encourage people, like encourage more people to play during that time, especially during holidays. And during the double fishing XP, and I think it was also double Slayer weekend as well, I decided to fish instead of Slayer because 
with fishing, it's you don't have to share monsters. Whereas with Slayer, it's probably going to be crowded, so I just save more time doing fishing, opposed to doing Slayer, which, yeah, oh well. But I did get two fishing levels while doing this, so just getting closer to 99. 90 runecrafting while doing some daily challenges. I also got some, what's it called, those gloves you get from the Crucible. I only did, it's pretty easy to get now because since there's nobody in the instance, you can just go around searching the bones, uh, the skeletons, for the pieces. It's not too hard to get. I got a few, but I'll talk more about minigames in a separate video. It's not going to be in the series, but it's just talk about it later. So while I was doing some Metro Dragons, I was pitting the bots, and what I mean by that is I would get the first hit and the bots would finish killing it for me. So I got this idea. Uh, like I didn't come up with the idea. I got the idea from Raji. Raji, who is Skiller, Jimmy Fly, 06, that guy. It worked really well. It doesn't work anymore because they nerfed the cooldown of Rejuvenate. So I'm not sure if there are bots there anymore at Mephro Dragons. There probably is at the Brutal Green Dragons, but I, I kind of just did it for the small chance that I would get a Dragon Full Home. I didn't get a Dragon Full Home, but I did get a Visage, which was... Is actually, I think this is the first Draconic Visage I got in this series, and possibly the first one I got on this account. So I'm actually going to count this towards actually getting one myself, because this is just a too awesome of a way to get it as my first Visage. And last episode, I got a few pairs of Dragon Claws at the time. I decided not to sell it because they were just too low of value. They were like maybe 500k or so. So I just kept it in my bank. Then weeks, uh, like a couple weeks after that, Jagex announced that they would release Chaotic Dragon Claws. So thankfully, I got, I had not sold my claws. So I kept them and was able to sell them for a lot higher than I would have if I sold them at like 500k each. So I got a lot back from the claw. I had probably made like easy 20 mil for just holding on to them. And since the beginning of the series, I have been mining like the stuff to make the potion flask. And finally, I have the level to craft them. So with that, I'm able to get 90 crafting off of it. Also, I think the price on potion flasks have gone up with recent events. So later in this video, actually, I don't sell it till next episode. But I do price check it for this episode. And I do make a good amount from that. Also got 92 crafting. Back in December, they released player-owned ports, which was a great update if you have already have a level 90 set, which I did. And if you didn't, you could still get like large XP lamps from there weekly. So I've been doing player own ports for quite a while now, long enough to get my fourth ship. I'm probably gonna go for the tradable version because by the time I have enough for the untradable version, it won't be worth as much as it was at its peak. And even the small amount of cash won't make that big of a difference. And it's something that I'm just gonna own just because it's unique, untradable to my account, and takes a while to get. So I also unlocked the Shambling Lair, takes a few tries, it unlocks a very nice crew member. But about the armor, I probably won't use the armor, like the level 85 armor, the untradable version that you get. I probably won't use that when I get it because I still want to show that you can still make money without using like high level armor or... Well, weapons you gotta get eventually, but armor doesn't make as big of a difference, so I'm just not going to use the level 85 armor. So while I was editing the last No Stables episode, I wanted to keep making money while I'm editing. So I went to Barrows because it's nice and easy. It's close to a bank, and I picked up a few armor pieces there. Not a lot because, well, I, I was only there for a short amount of time, but I did take pictures. And the reason I'm taking pictures is because if I try to record and edit at the same time, it makes editing a whole lot longer than it needs to be. So I'm just taking pictures just so it's a lot more simpler and it lags a whole lot less. So I did not realize this until somebody pointed it out to me, but the armor are not worth as much as they were pre-EOC. They're still around 300-500k per piece. It's not too different than pre-EOC, except for certain armor pieces where it's worth a lot more because they've added new weapons into the game like the Kero's Pistol Bow and I think those are Arim's Wand. But I still believe that Barrows is still worth doing as an early step into money making because of how easy it is in the EOC. Because with the magic stun ability it roots the target to the ground for a little over 15 seconds and the cooldown is 15 seconds so it's pretty much the same as using Ice Barrage pre-EOC except you don't have to use, it doesn't cost any runes to use. 
So because of this, I still think that Barrows is a good step up to like an early step into money making because it's nice and easy with the abilities you get and it's pretty easy even without uh, even if you have like level 60 or 70 armor, it's still pretty easy. After Chaotic Claws were released, I had assumed that they did less damage than a normal Chaotic, like less damage than a Chaotic Longsword, Chaotic Rapier, so I just assumed that it would do less. So I ignored the Chaotic Claw for quite a while. But a couple weeks after it was released, I had a thought, what if I was wrong because I had never even tried to test it? And I believe I thought of this after I looked into how the three Dragor weapons do pretty much the same DPS, with only a slight difference due to a bug with dual wielding that still needs to be fixed, but upon testing out the Chaotic Claw, I was pretty surprised that they do the same amount of damage as a Chaotic Long, as a Chaotic Rapier, but the upside is the Chaotic Claw, the primary hand, costs 100 tokens, 100,000 tokens less than a Chaotic Long or Chaotic Rapier, and on top of that, the Chaotic Claw has a Critical Strike bonus on it. I didn't purchase the offhand because at the moment, a Chaotic Wall is much better than a uh, dual wielding Chaotic. So if you're going to use a Shield, use a Chaotic Claw. If you're not going to use a Shield, use a Chaotic Wall. So there's that. After finding out that the Chaotic Claw does pretty much the same amount of damage as like a Chaotic Long, Chaotic Rapier, I purchased one, made one, and decided to take on the Queen Black Dragon for the first time in the series since the EOC with my newly purchased Dragon Claw. The Dragon Chaotic Dragon Claw is probably the best one-handed Chaotic. The only reason you would use a one-handed Chaotic is if you need to wear a shield, which I do for the Queen Black Dragon because I don't have 85 herb lore for Super Anti-Fire. So Chaotic Claw is good for the Queen Black Dragon if you don't have 85 herb lore. If you do have 85 herb lore, you're probably better off using a Chaotic Claw because a Chaotic Maul does more damage because there's some bugs with dual wielding right now. I probably should have recorded some more of the actual fights instead of just the loot because after all, all these, like, it's just the loot back to back to back to back because I got a decent amount of kills from the Queen Black Dragon. Like, I did a 10 hours-ish maybe of it. It's a lot. But I was still able to get a, manage about 10 kills per hour, including banking time. It was about 3 kills per trip with a pack yak. I didn't have soul split. If I did, I could like pretty much save my stuff forever, but I don't. So I'm kind of thinking of maybe purchasing soul split next because it would really help for camping the Queen Black Dragon. So when I'm banking, I use the player own like that. You see that little book in my inventory? That's the player own ports captain's log. And I just use that to bank because it teleports me to player own ports. I have a I got a bank in the player own ports, so I use that. And it's actually quicker to go from player own ports to the Queen Black Dragon than if you were to use the Lodestone to get to the Queen Black Dragon. If it wasn't for the Tokozo breaking if you died with it, I would probably use that to bank and then use the captain's log to teleport back, but it just breaks on death and if I don't protect it say like if it cuts me out of my death screen then I'm just gonna lose the total zone which is why I'm not bringing that. I'm actually surprised I was able to get as many kills as I did at the Queen Black Dragon with only using sharks. I didn't really consider doing much PVM early EOC because there were just so many bugs, some monsters were just too easy and I didn't want to like skyrocket in bank value just because it was too easy. So I waited a couple weeks till they uh, made the monsters more more challenging what they're meant to be and just started making money there and I'm surprised that the Queen Black Dragon like pre-EOC you wouldn't maybe need like uh inventory of Bruce do one kill but here you could do like I was able to do three kills with just uh inventory of sharks and a pack yak. Without a pack yak, I would probably get like two kills with a tortoise and this is all without soul splits. So most of this is because the like when you mess up it's not as punishing as because the souls they don't do like 80% of your HP if you miss it. It's a lot less punishing than pre-EOC so it's easier to do. Especially the more armor or life points you have. The more life points you have the less chance you'll die because you can't get bursted down as quickly. And now that mostly people are using sharks, rock tails rather than brews like pre-EOC it is also a lot cheaper because sharks are pretty cheap. They're like 500 GP each, not much. Actually, 
from what I've heard from some forum post or a video, I think they said that the best place to get effigies is actually from the Queen Black Dragon and actually did manage to get one effigy. This is probably, a th I believe this is the third effigy of the series. So after getting the FG earlier at the Queen Black Dragon, I decided to I should open my FGs because the more I have, the less chance I have to get another. So I thought, why not just open it? And of course, I would use the XP lamp at the end on summoning because I'm gonna get summoning to 99 eventually. I'm not gonna rush it by like trying to get uh, like camp out charms, but I'm just gonna get it up slowly through like FGs, weekly XP, monthly XP, stuff like that. Now the earlier clip where I actually showed myself fighting the Queen Black Dragon, I tried to do it with an Iron Titan to try and make it quicker because a while it actually took me a while to realize that I had an Iron Titan and that for about the first 50 kills I was using an anti-fire shield even though I forgot that I had a dragon fire shield in my bank. But there were a few problems with trying to use an Iron Titan. Uh, if I wanted to do it effectively with my Iron Titan, I would need to bring Summoning Flask to just kill it a whole lot quicker, which is pretty expensive if you look at the price, so I'm not sure if I would use that yet. And they're, they're quite expensive to use, so I don't think I'll be using that anytime soon. The second problem is if even if I had the flask or the money to buy the flask, I would need some kind of sustain so that I don't like bank every single kill. Without Soul Split yet, I... It's just not worth me using an uh, Iron Titan yet. So I decided to go with the safe conservative method of using a Beast of Burden approach. I'll get the kill for sure, it may take a bit longer, but I probably won't run out of food and die trying to get the kill. Hello and welcome. So it's been a while since I've actually done any live commentary. I'm here at Player Own Ports, where I actually got my own bank now. And I, I've been doing, uh, what's it called? I've been doing... No, it's not sailing. Clear on ports. Yeah, I have some of the stuff. I'm gonna go for an untradeable set, but I'm not gonna actually use it during the series because in the EOC, it's mostly focused on like offensive items count more than defensive items. And even with like standard Barrows gear, you would do fine. So I'm just gonna get it, but I probably won't use it because it wouldn't even help that much. And there's a big difference if I would use it. So uh, I'm just gonna go through my bank tabs really quick. Like in my first tab, this is, it's just for whatever I'm doing at the moment, which at the moment I'm doing the Queen Black Dragon. So I have my QBD things here. If I were to go to QBD, I would do take my pots, take prayer pots, sharks, and out I go. Although I don't have my gear, which I kind of repaired down here, but we'll get to that later. So first tab, just, basic loot and stuff I have the cash that I get from KBD. Second tab is runes. If I wanted to go to the Grand Exchange, just grab this and then teleport straight to Vera. It's just nice and quick for me. I don't really use the stuff in this. These maple logs were from doing what's it it's that minigame Kingdom of uh, Miscellanea. Actually maybe it's not a minigame. And then there's food that I don't really use since I use sharks. Yeah sharks third tab is kind of my combat tab. I got my three void sets. I got during the double pest control thing, level 75 weaponry, my chaotic that I purchased, as well as my chaotic claw here. Then, yeah, basically I have royal, my royal crossbow, and my royal dehyde, which is very cheap, and it's level 65, so it's not that big of a difference. Then I have my pouches, um, the patches on top, scrolls on the bottom, then miscellaneous stuff here, yak scrolls here, but since I'm doing QBD, my yak patches are out here. Then there's charms, stuff like that. Then this tab is, um, there's some EXP stuff here. I will probably use it on summoning eventually, but I have to get around to it. Then down here is the stuff that I was doing to fight killing stuff in. Um, I'm going to have to finish that guide eventually. Uh, let's see. This tab is really, there's nothing to it, except I kind of do my skill here because there's not much. Like, this is my junk tab where I just throw anything that I'm not using into here. And this is just kind of like scaling where there's not much stuff in here. Next tab is the potions tab. It's just where I accumulate all of the potions. Yeah. Then this is my last tab. This is just uh, kind of my drop tab where I... I don't really sell anything anymore since I've... It's been a while since I already passed the 100 mil mark. So I have extra cash, 
Well, not a lot because um, I'm not selling some of it. I do have some in the ground exchange, but this is mostly where I keep all of the drops. As well, uh, like I don't even sell my barrels anymore. And this is the cool vistage I got when I was doing Mephro Dragons. So this is my QBD drop tab. Um, most of the drops are from QBD. This is just from my gear, the sharks that I use. The jack pouches are just from what I made, and just these last two are just part of my gear. And the rest of my gear will be towards the end because I fixed my barrow, so I'll just press check it then. And this tab is, well it's supposed to be my mage tab, but most of the runes they don't accumulate too much, maybe like 3 mil total, but that's about it. And then this is just like, there's Ganodermic, there's some Royal Bolts, level 75 weaponry like Zami Spear, Sarah Sword, and a Band of God Sword. And that's pretty much it. Tab, it's just like a lot of small valley items. 4 mil, it's okay. Small amount. Skilling tab, um, the battle stats, they cost a lot, but they're pretty cheap XP. So, which is why I'm doing it, but it takes like a decent amount. 25-ish, and that's just for the supplies. These potions are just like the PK potions that I bought, like the normal super, there's, well, I don't have super attacks here, but I have like the ranging potions, mage potions, fairy potions, and I guess most of it is in potion flask. Why are they so high? I guess the reason maybe the potion flasks are pretty high is because people Maybe it's because of that free EOC server thing, and uh, I should probably sell this before they go back down though. But I guess I did make a decent amount of money from them. 16 mil from all those daily flasks, I guess it does add up. The last tab is my loot tab, and it's pretty big because there's just so many items in it. Uh, the beginning stuff is just my dailies. There used to be the deference, but then they're 92 GPH now because of the EOC, so I stopped buying them. But I still have a lot from doing QBD, from doing barrels, from doing dailies, and I just didn't sell it, but it's still worth some money. Then there's the gems, some herbs, just random usual stuff. Some of this is going into when I was doing Water Fiend, so I got a, a lot of Mithril arrows from that. And there's just random herbs that pile up. This, this first part over here, I'm glad that this is like my Dagon offerings. Um, I did not sell them and they, they rose up to a fairly high price, a lot higher than they were before. And there's some Dagon off bones. Um, kind of sad that Dragon Stones aren't worth that much anymore. Some Avantos, Bullet Runes, I got a lot from doing QB as well as Barrows. And then there's a lot of Alk value items like runes, uh, more rune items. Then there's some Geyser Titans, and th those were just the ones I made from over double summoning XP weekend. And these, it should hold its value since it's most of the pouches are around shard value. Yeah, pretty much just a lot of alcohols. Mostly from, a lot of it is from this top row. Still, that's a lot, like 41 mil, not bad. And the very last tab is my barrows and pretty much miscellaneous items. I have the visage I got from Mifro Dragons. Yeah, Draconic Visage. I have a barrow set like Darax. Back when Darax was good, then I got nerfed, so it's not as good. And I have a decent amount of Varax sets because apparently, well, I got a decent amount of them. Then there is Ganodermic Flakes. I bought this to help repair Ganodermic when it's degraded. And then there's eight Onyx uh, that I did a couple episodes ago where it was for the Fight Kill guide I was gonna do, but then Dagex changed how Rejuvenate works, so I gotta do it again at some point. And like this 2.9k Rocktails, I fished all of this back when there was that uh, double fishing XP going on, so these, that's a lot of rock sales actually. I did get some good fishing XP in there. And after all this, I'm going to tally all of these values up and see how much my bank is worth. Along with this value in my coin pouch. And I also did not price check the 1.3 mil here. As well as like random items that may be around my other tabs. After adding up the value from the previous tabs, thankfully to increase prices on certain items like the Dagon offerings, the potion flask, which was great. I finally come up to a total of a 200 mil bank. Actually, maybe a bit more than 200 mil because there's still that 5 mil in my coin pouch and 1.3 mil from the Queen Black Dragon. 
on top of a bunch of random items that I did not price check because they're quite small. But I'll just say I have 200 mil here. I will most likely be buying 95 prior soon because even if I had like uh, 70 prior to start with in this series, I would be able to afford 70 to 95 prior with the 200 mil I have now. But I'm not sure when I will actually train prior because I still want to do a good amount of the series without like soul split or turmoil, just to show it's easy to keep on going without it. Although, like soul split does really help a lot because of the extra sustain you get from it. But aside from that, thank you very much for watching and have a nice day.